Hi, this is my unboxing and first impressions of my Nimiki Emperor, which I wanted to get for a long time. I recorded this video without audio when it arrived, but I am commentating over the video since I was too excited to open the package and to get the pen out, and I did not have a quiet environment at the time of recording this. It comes in this cardboard box, and inside you have a wooden box with the Nimiki logo on it and the blue knot which looks very elegant. The wood seems to be the same as my Nimiki Yukar Royale wooden box. The Nimiki Emperor is a flagship model of the Nimiki line. And Nimiki as a brand is a sub-brand of general company Palette. And they usually make higher-end pens like Maquillet versions which goes into tens of thousands of dollars. And this is considered an entry-level pen for the Nimiki Emperor. And it retails for $2,000, which is a ridiculous amount of money. When you open it up, uh, the wood is very soft and you can tell it's very high quality. You have the user care guide, pilot registration card, which is a warning card and more instructions. Once you remove the foam, you have the red cloth that it comes in. And I bought this from Goldspot and it comes in this like satin velvet finish. It's very elegant. And the cloth is the same color as the new camper i think the outer, outer layer is what it will look like over time and inside layer is how it is when you get out of the box since urushi ages over time kind of like dulls but it's not a negative dull like it just changes over time and uh, when holding it uh, it is not as big as i thought it would be i mean people made this pen out to be super huge but don't get me wrong, this is definitely an oversized pen. It is amazing holding in real life. And it is not as big as I thought it would be in the pictures. The Vermilion Urushi finish looks amazing as well. And the nib. The nib is a lot bigger than I expected. It's like a small knife. And has the plastic feet coated with Urushi as well to match the entire body, which looks very elegant. Let's get into what else it comes with. It comes with this class eyedropper, which matches the vermilion finish with this pen. And it was a bit harder to open this. You can tell it's a little bit higher quality eyedropper. I mean, you expect this pen at this point to come with its own filling mechanism accessories, so. I also forgot to mention, it comes with the Namiki Blue ink. Now let's get into the pen itself. I'm going to just show it in comparison to some of my other Urushi pens, just to show how big the pen is. Have its younger brother, the Namiki Car Royale. And the Pilot Custom Urushi, keep in mind the Pilot Custom Urushi is an oversized pen and then the Emperor dwarfs it. Then we have the Pilot Custom E23 that everyone loves. Now let's show how they measure up uncapped. Since the Miki is a sub brand under Pilot, they use the same nib sizing system. So I, I also want to show the nib comparisons. We have the size 50 Emperor nib, followed by the size 30 Pilot Custom Urushi nib, then size 20 Nimiki Yukar Royale nib, and finally the size 15 Pilot Custom 823 nib. These are all beautiful nibs. They all have plastic feeds. With the exception of the Emperor, which has plastic feet, but it's coated with Urushi. 
You can see the difference in thickness of nib sections as well. Varying from the Emperor, Custom Rushi, Yuka Royale, and Custom E23. These are just amazing nibs. I wish the Namik Emperor was a two-tone nib like the Palette Custom Rushi. Actually, the Makie versions, the ones that cost like ten thousands of dollars, are actually two-tone, where the Mount Fuji is actually silver trim. But I wish they did that with the Namiki Emperors, which would look a lot better. The Emperor is just an amazing pen. This is an eyedropper with a one-way shutoff valve as the mechanism, so to let ink in the nib section, you have to open the back up. But because of how big the pen is, uh, I'm sure you could use for several pages with the ink inside the nib section alone, so you don't have to always open the back up, but occasionally you have to open it up. And you can use that as a way to flush the pen as well when you pull it out completely. Once you unscrew the nib section to the barrel, you get the eyedropper where you put the ink in. This is an ebonite body, so you can use it as an eyedropper, which is very convenient. And this holds about 4 millimeters of ink, which is a lot of ink. The inside of the cap also has padding, so Theoretically, you can post this, but I don't know why anyone would want to post this huge pen. You have a serial number on the top of the clip as well, just like the Miki Car Royale. I also decided to film myself inking up my Emperor for the first time, and as you can see, I am trying to ink it up uncomfortably with my hands behind my iPhone, so as not to drop the very expensive pen. So to ink it up, you screw the nib section and open up the back a little bit so ink can go into the barrel. Then you take the glass eyedropper which it comes with, which I'm guessing holds about one millimeters of ink per use. So, so it's hard to see but I decided to not fully ink it up for my first time. And I'm using Iroshizuku Momiji ink which is a very beautiful red ink which I thought would look cool and match my Namiki Emperor. can't really see inside the barrel and again I'm sorry because my hands are always shaking because I'm doing this behind my iPhone and I'm trying my hardest not to drop this $2,000 retail fountain pen. Once you ink it up then you just fully close the barrel and that's about it then you let the ink flow into the nib section and to the feed. So after leaving it out for at that state for a minute so that the ink goes into the nib section, I decided to finally write with that huge number 50 size nib for the first time. The black thing you see at the top left of the Clairefontaine paper is a microphone which I tried to use connect to my iPhone to pick up the sound of the nib for the first time, but I was picking up too much background noise so in my review I will try to get a more detailed sound of the nib. As you can see, I don't have huge hands or very small hands, but this still looks very big on my hands, but it's still very comfortable due to the Ebonite body. It actually weighs only 48 grams, and in comparison, the Yukata Royale weighs 47 grams. This is an 18 karat broad nib, and this nib writes so smooth with no feedback. You would think for a nib this huge, it would feel flexy, like the Custom Urushi or the 1000 nibs, but it actually doesn't. It feels very sturdy. The reverse writing is smooth as well, and you can definitely get some line variation out of it if you push the nib, which I would not recommend. I think what gives the sturdy feel to the nib is the plastic feet that's covered with Urushi. In terms of price, this retails for $2,000 as you saw by the title. Found pens are a luxury, so objectively speaking, they are not worth the price. So when, bu when buying these, they are worth however much you are willing to pay for a writing experience. I bought this brand new on sale for $1,500, which is very expensive, super expensive for a found pen of all things. In my videos, I always tell people how much I personally pay for my found pens, 
to be transparent, but this is not to say that this is worth it for everyone. For me, personally speaking, at the price that I paid for the Emperor, I believe it is worth it for me due to the craftsmanship that goes into Urushi technique, the varying experience that it offers, and the assurance that if I decide to sell it in the future, I will be able to make back my money I paid for it. For some people, this might not be worth it, and that is totally fine because everyone has a different taste and budget they are willing to spend on the hobby. I will release a full review of this Emperor in a few months after writing with this and testing it out. For example, I bought my Power Custom Urushi in June and did not do a review on it until 4 months later in October. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and thank you and have a great day.